So we have something very special in this glass case right now. Let's talk about what it is. So this is actually a sample prototype of the first Nike ever. It was buried in Bill Bowerman's yard. Bill Bowerman is the co-founder of Nike. He was the legendary track coach at the University of Oregon. The first Nike innovation ever is the waffle. And this shoe right here is actually a handmade waffle by Bill Bowerman. He buried it in his backyard. Um, actually, in 2011, a lot of stuff was uncovered in Bill Bowerman's backyard and Nike got it, including the original waffle iron. This was dug up by a utility worker and he asked Bowerman's son if he could keep it. And the guy said yes. Um, the Shuseum was on Pawn Stars and after it aired, this guy reached out to me. And actually his neighbor reached out to me. So you get a call from a guy claiming to have the first Nike sneaker ever. I get an email from a guy with the worst pictures you've ever seen saying that his neighbor has a sample handmade ground zero prototype waffle from Bill Bowerman's yard. And he takes a picture. It was like somebody 75 years old took their first picture with a cell phone or something. Okay. Even though he wasn't 75, he was like in his 50s. Um, I got this message and I saw the picture and I couldn't quite make out what exactly he had. And I was just elated with joy. I mean, I wanted to stop exactly what I was doing and pick up the phone and call him. But I was like, okay, I've got to like really play it cool here. This is an opportunity to acquire something that I'll never have my chance at again. Okay. So I waited out a couple of hours and then I reach out, send him another message and I'm like, hey, like, let's talk. And I called him, he gave me his number and he started telling me the story of how his next door neighbor works for the power company and how sometimes the trees in Oregon get really high and they'll mess with the power lines. And so this guy was called out to Bill Bowerman's house, the same house that Bowerman had been living in since the 60s and 70s, and his job was to excavate trees that were hitting the power lines. And while he was digging up these trees, he found this shoe, along with some other shoes and a Nike waffle. And I'm listening to this story, and I remember reading about it in the Oregonian when Nike found what they were calling their holy grail, which was the waffle iron. And this guy's story, was perfectly aligned with what I was reading years back and it seemed very authentic. Like it didn't seem for a second like this guy was trying to pull the wool over me or anything. Mm -hmm. And I asked if they could send me some more pictures and we talked over a period of a few days about the shoe. And they were like, we're willing to sell it to you. What do you think it's worth? And I was like, well, it's pretty much impossible for me to figure out what I think this shoe is worth. Mm -hmm. The only thing I could even compare it to was there was a pair of shoes that claimed to have been worn by Steve Prefontaine. Now Prefontaine was one of the original runners over at Nike and on eBay one shoe was auctioned off and it went for like $1,700 and it was supposedly worn by Prefontaine. And I was like, look, I don't know any comparable anything that I could even say of what one shoe is worth that was buried in this guy's yard, except that here's this Prefontaine shoe that went for $1,700 after eBay fees, it's about 1,500 bucks. What do you think? And they were like, will you pay our PayPal fees and shipping? And I was like, sure. So it was like $1,540. Um, they said to me, look, like, we're not trying to become millionaires off of this or anything. We really want you to have the shoe. We know how much Nike means to you and how much this piece would mean to you. And they said, we've reached out to Nike five different times to tell them that we have this shoe and that we want to donate it to them or to sell it to them and nobody even responds. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, it's their loss. Okay. This shoe is worth how much you think right now? I think it's easily worth $100,000. Easily. So this is a hundred thousand dollar shoe that's in front of you right now. There's just not any other out there. Now, are there any other shoes that are worth a hundred thousand dollars in the world? Well, there was Michael Jordan's flu game pair that sold for auction last year. It went for a hundred and four thousand seven hundred and sixty-five dollars. Okay. Um, there, there's the the Yeezy twos that got auctioned off. 
Yeah, I think um, those went for like 99,000, but I don't even know if that if was that real. Yeah. Was real. Actually, a pair of Justin Bieber's worn Jordan Flight 45s sold for $50,000 on eBay okay. just a few months ago. Um, you know, if you think of like the M&M 4 most recently hit Flight Club at 37,500. We've got the undefeated 4 in the case here that's $25,000 or I guess it's over there. So, so th this is one of the most expensive shoes on the planet right now. Definitely. I actually called Nike to try to see if I could get the left shoe. <laughs> um, they didn't call me back. And I called him like four times. <laughs> Scott Reams is the guy who works in the Department of Nike Archives. And he was the guy that the Oregonian reached out to when they unveiled the waffle iron and all this stuff. And I was like, hey, like I've got the size 13 right shoe, do you have like a spare left? They never got back to me. Um, this shoe though, it's a prototype of the moon shoe. The first waffles that were ever made by Bill Bowerman were called moon shoes because the impression left on the ground reminded him of the impression left by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin when they walked on the moon two years earlier in 1969. This shoe was actually only made for a handful of runners that competed in the Oregon Olympic trials. In 1972, the Olympics were in Munich, but the trials were in Eugene, Oregon. And Bill Bowerman made about a dozen pairs of these moon shoes for the runners. And this is a sample prototype of that. The moon shoes were never actually sold to the public until the retro era, like in the 2000s. Actually, the first waffle was the Oregon waffle and then the waffle trainer and waffle sure. racer. But this is where it all started. Going back to Steve Prefontaine, this pair of shoes right here is called the Pre-Montreal. Montreal was for the Montreal Olympics in 1976, pre because pre-Fontaine, or maybe pre because they came out before the Olympics. But these shoes were made from 73 to 76, specifically for Steve Prefontaine. And before I got my hands on this moon shoe, this was it for me. Like, the Steve Prefontaine was like my holy grail. Okay. So and how much are those worth about? I picked them up on eBay for $3,383. Okay. About five years ago. I think they're worth considerably more now. How much do you think, if you were to guess? I know what I wouldn't take for them. You know, like if someone offered me 10 grand, I wouldn't take it. Okay. Well, I, maybe it's worth less than that to somebody else, but okay. just to me, like, Steve Prefontaine is the soul of Nike. Like, that's what Phil Knight says. And to have the shoes that were made for him, it's just really special. So, I mean, what's interesting about these, these original prototypes that you have, you know, that are buried in the backyard is that they still have the Nike swoosh on them. Yes. So it, it's, it's so interesting how with all the different technology and, you know, the billions of dollars that have been made, Nike has still kept the exact same logo this whole time. And the way it came about is fascinating. You know, Nike was named by Jeff Johnson, who was one of the first employees at Nike. And Nike is the Greek goddess of victory. This guy was in his sleep one morning and woke up and uttered Nike and thought it would be a cool name and figured out that it was the Greek goddess of victory and pitched it to Phil Knight, who wasn't a fan. At the time, he wanted to call Nike Dimension Six. <laughs> Okay. But that wouldn't fit well on any shoes. And he right. was like, okay, you know, maybe it'll grow on me. And then he hired Carolyn Davidson, who was a friend of his, and she was a graphic designer. She needed money for a prom dress. And he hired her for $2 an hour. It took her 17 and a half hours. And she designed the swoosh, which was sort of a varied check mark. And the swoosh was meant to represent the wings of Nike, the Greek goddess of victory. Sure. What do you think about the lawsuit that's happening right now where the, the photographer, this one photographer who, who took like a jump man type photo of Michael Jordan is now suing and saying that Nike owes him money for all these logos over the course of the last few decades? Well, I mean, let me just take a step back and say that I'm almost as fascinated by the lawsuits that come out involving Nike as I am with the shoes. Okay. Um, the jump man lawsuit, I think it's frivolous. It seems pretty crazy that a photographer can come out after all these years and claim that he has a right to the Jumpman logo. Um, there was, if you read 
some of the press releases that have come out about that story. Originally, Time Magazine hired this photographer to shoot Michael Jordan. He was wearing New Balance shoes in the picture. And they took the pictures, and then as the Air Jordan 1 was being designed, Nike licensed the rights to use the image again. Mm -hmm. So there's like, the, they were definitely inspired by the work that he did. I mean, you can't look at those two images of Michael Jordan and, and, th and think that they don't look alike, because they really do. But, you know, to claim that he has a right to, to the image that became so iconic, I, I just don't buy it. Jaden Kiss, man. Mm. That dude is old school dude, you know, OG in the game. So he got stuff for years that you haven't even seen. Oh, my favorite sneaker, the, uh, the all black sixes, the, 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 the original jump off from the, from the championship and shit like that. Those are my favorite releases, but I got, a, I got a pair that I didn't have for so long that I just, I play ball with them still sometimes. I wear them out, they just, they twisted, but they from the first era of them, so you know.